we are paying attention to how other governments are operating when it comes to the press. But his record with reporters at home has been controversial, with some saying it's a far cry from the promises he made when first elected. The way to make government responsible is to hold it accountable. And the way to make government accountable is to make it transparent. And in some ways, his administration did. We've been talking about accountability and transparency all hour here. But the Obama administration also engaged in a war on whistleblowers, prosecuting far more government officials for leaks to the press than past administrations did. A few years ago, internal government documents about the administration's insider threat program equated leaks with espionage. Numerous government employees, including, most famously, Edward Snowden and Chelsea Manning, have either been charged or convicted for leaking information to the press under the Espionage Act. Journalists have sometimes been caught up in these investigations. Let me show you an example. Uh, this is back in 2013. The Justice Department secretly obtained phone records of both Associated Press reporters and editors. The AP called this an unconstitutional act. Now, this is how the White House justified the action. You know, the president is a strong defender of the First Amendment and a firm believer in the need for the press to be unfettered in its ability to conduct investigative reporting and facilitate a free flow of information. He also, of course, recognizes the need for the Justice Department to investigate alleged criminal activity. With a new administration about to take over, the question becomes, did the Obama administration contribute to a criminalization of the press? What are the consequences here? Now, James Risen is here to answer. He's a national security reporter with the New York Times who faced the threat of being jailed by the government for his refusal to reveal his sources. Uh, James, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Your seven-year legal fight ended uh, last year. Uh, tell us, uh, when I say the word criminalization of the press, when I use that phrase, is that an exaggeration? Is that an overstatement of what happened in your case? No, I think it's very accurate. Um, I think in my case... Uh, they tried to, uh, you know, they, in fact, the government considered uh, at one point um, charging me with obstruction of justice. They considered at various points uh, making me a subject of the investigation. Uh, they tried to drag me in uh, to an espionage investigation. Let me show on screen something you posted on Twitter last year. You said, I plan to spend the rest of my life fighting to undo the damage to press freedom in the United States done by Barack Obama and Eric Holder. What other kinds of damage have you seen done in the last eight years? I think this administration has been the most secretive uh, since the Nixon administration. They've been uh, the most anti-press uh, administration since the Nixon administration. In what ways? Yeah. Well, uh, they have gone after, they have, uh, as you said, criminalized investigative reporting. They try to take, essentially, uh, stories that they don't like and try to find some uh, classified information that might be part of that and then turn it into a, leak, a criminal leak investigation in which they say someone mishandled or disclosed classified information. You, as you know, you could do that with virtually any story in Washington. Does it mean much to you or anything to you that uh, the Eric Holder, the former attorney general, others have expressed some regret about some of the ways uh, that this administration uh, tried to pursue whistleblowers and, and in some cases a, a wrap up journalists in that? I recall Holder saying one of his greatest regrets was describing Fox News' James Rosen as an unindicted co-conspirator in one of these situations. Yeah, after he said that, he kept coming after me. Uh, mm. And I, I don't think that there was any serious regret by the administration. I think that hmm. they uh, didn't like negative publicity. Uh, and so whenever people pointed this out in the press and b when it became a big issue, they would say, oh, we're, we're, being, we're misunderstood. Uh, but I don't think eight years of a pattern of behavior is something that's misunderstood. So what does this tell us about the next four to eight years? How could a President Trump uh, build on what we saw during the Obama administration with regards to pursuing leakers and sometimes looking into the journalists publishing those leaks? Well, I think it'll be very easy. I think uh, Obama and Holder have left uh, Trump uh, a very, you know, clear path on how to do this. Ob you know, you, people don't remember that until, like, the, Plame, the Valerie Plame case in 2004, leaks were basically ignored by the government. So this process that the 
Obama administration engaged in was really new. It was a sharp break with past tradition in Washington when leaks were largely ignored. Now so Obama has... So even about a dozen years ago, you're saying uh, there's been a big change recently. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, when I first, I first started covering the CIA and the Clinton administration, and the Clinton administration never did these kind of leaks. No one ever did before, uh, really, the, uh, after 9-11 and then after the Plame case. And then the Obama administration took what the George W. Bush administration had begun on leaks and really ratcheted it up and made it a much bigger issue. It, it turned it into a top uh, priority for uh, federal law enforcement, Last question which it had never you. been before. How does it change the way you do your job? Do you try to communicate with sources differently? You know, I saw the New York Times recently set up an anonymous tip uh, way to send in tips. Other outlets have encrypted tip boxes where you can send documents. How do you do your job differently? Well, you have to uh, get use encryption much more than ever before. Mm. You have to learn. I think the, the best thing to do, though, is uh, try to meet people in person and uh, try to, uh, you know, go off the grid as much as possible. Uh, that's, you know, really the simplest and the easiest thing to do. Mm. James, thank you so much for being here this morning.